Hello everyone, good evening to you. Uh, welcome to the, the broadcast today. My name is Javit and I'm a trend trader. I've been trading since 2001 and I've done day trading, I've done scalping and I've started trend trading since 2003. So I'm a full-time trend trader and uh, Sanjay, good, uh, good evening to you, welcome to you. Uh, Dan, welcome to you as well. Um, thank you for, for joining my stream today. If you guys haven't seen the previous streams, then please do. You can go to the YouTube channel and check the streams out from there. I'm Arlen, good, uh, good evening to you. Thank you for joining. So today we're going to be talking about a typical day trading from a trend trading perspective. So not a day trading perspective, but a trend trading perspective. And the Addison welcome, Patrick welcome, um, rise or freeze. Uh, first time viewing, welcome, thank you for joining us. Puso, thank you for joining us. Robin, hi there, how are you? Dan, Mark, thank you all for, for joining me today. So once again, just in case uh, you would missed what I'd said, Khan, good morning, oh, good evening to you, sorry. Um, Kona Mick, is it? Uh, good evening to you as well. Uh, just in case you would missed what I'd said, uh, basically I am a trend trader, that means I trade longer term trends. I don't take targets, I try to stay in a trade as long as possible and I've been trading since 2001. A, a bit harder to hear you. Um, Mark, you're saying you can't hear me. The microphone is on. Um, can everyone else hear me okay? Just uh, if you say yes or no, please let me know. Please. Hopefully you can all hear me okay. Uh, all good, yes. Okay, great. So. Uh, yes, you can all hear me. Thank you very much. Uh, Wendy, good, uh, good evening to you as well. So so basically, I want to go through uh, a couple of points today. Miguel, welcome. Pixie, welcome. Nice to have you on board today. Um, I want to go through a few points today, and I want to describe a typical trend trading day, which will be very different to, if, if you're familiar with day trading or scalping, or if you are a day trader or a scalper, be very different to that type of day. And the trend trading day, if you like, actually starts at the weekend. Hi, Julian. The, the weekend actually is the busiest time of, of the week, if you like, for a trend trader. And for, from my personal point of view, it's split into two sections. It's split into foreign exchange and stocks. Now, while I can do foreign exchange and stocks myself, luckily Anne actually takes care of the stocks part of it, and I do the foreign exchange. So on a Saturday morning or early Saturday um, afternoon, Anne goes through all the stocks and I go for a foreign exchange for the week ahead. And that's really where the week starts. It starts from dissecting the market at the weekend, doing all the hard work, and then during the course of the week, it allows us to actually have very little time in front of the computer. Uh, you day trade e-minis for a living. Um, ICE, I think at the end of the name, but ICE, you day trade e-minis for a living. If, if you are a day trader, this will be very different to what you're probably familiar with. And when I said at the weekend, that's, that's the probably the, the busiest period for us. The, the weekdays are actually fairly quiet and um, we don't actually have a lot to do. In fact, I'm going to explain to you how we actually do less than 20 minutes each day. But the weekend is actually very different. And it starts, as I said, Saturday morning or early afternoon. And we're going through foreign exchange and stocks. Now, as, as I said, and takes care of the stocks, I do foreign exchange. In fact, I've got the easier bit because there are a lot less foreign exchange to go through than there are stocks. And we trade the US stock market. We don't really trade any of the other markets. We do the UK from a long term investing point of view. But from a trading perspective, we trade the, the US market. And what we look for, or what should, I should say what Anne looks for, but what dynamic traders in general look for is breakouts and pullbacks. Now, if we are in a period of consolidation, then we want to trade a breakout. And the breakout tells us when we have cleared that consolidation period. We don't want to trade a consolidation because that's our capital tied up for a prolonged period of time and the market really is going nowhere during that period. So we want to trade the trends. And of course, we're not going to be guaranteed any trends on a breakout, but there's more chance of having a trend once a breakout has occurred than actually trading within the consolidation. So what we're looking for is to create two watch lists. One of them is for breakouts and one of them is for pullbacks. And on the breakout watch list, we use softwares like Metatrader, sorry, Metastock, 
Um, trade stations, I don't know if you're familiar with, we used to use trade station, not so much now. But to go through 10,000 US stocks, we then try to, uh, maybe one second, I think there's an echo from the sound here. Okay, hopefully that's uh, much better. Um, we try to basically go through the whole of the US market. We take away some of the stocks that we don't particularly want to trade, and I'll go through those criteria shortly. Uh, and we try and find stocks that are breaking out and also going through a neat pullback. Now, by that, I mean they've been trending already. So they're not in a consolidation. They've already been trending. And now they're having what could be a flag formation or what I refer to as a breather. A breather is a little bit longer or prolonged um, than a flag formation. So slightly deeper if you would take Fibonacci levels. While we don't focus on Fibonacci, but if you took Fibonacci levels, you're probably looking around 0 0.32, 0.58% and perhaps 0.618, but in terms of Fibonacci levels. But what we're looking for generally is a neat trend with some kind of clean pullback. Not a messy pullback, but a clean pullback. So we're looking for two watch lists, one's for breakouts and one for pullbacks. And these are for stocks and also for foreign exchange as well. Um, Puso, how do you filter what you don't like? Um, there are a couple of criteria that we use. Uh, one of them is that we want stocks to be over a certain price and we want stocks to have a certain amount of volume. So if a stock has a very low volume, we're not generally interested in it. We want to have stocks that are fairly liquid. Foreign exchange is the most liquid market in the world. And with foreign exchange, it's fairly easy to pick something, especially if it's a major currency pair, and you'll probably find that it will have liquidity. Having said that, the euro dollar, well, in fact, most of the currencies are actually in a range at the moment. So there isn't a lot of liquidity. But generally, the foreign exchange market, being the biggest market in the world, will have liquidity. And with it having liquidity, we're not going to have an issue trading most of those pairs or crosses. With stocks, there is a different criteria, which is they're not as liquid as currencies. So that means we need to have some form of element to tell us that there is some kind of momentum happening. Now, the obvious momentum is a breakout of a range. The, the second one is actually a trend continuation, such as a flag formation. And then the third one being volume. So we need to have good volume. If you've got low volume, we're not really interested. So if it's like, I don't know, 100,000, it's not something we're actually too concerned about. We want to have volume that's fairly high. So, and a certain price level as well. So those are kind of the criteria. We have a lot more than that, but those are kind of criteria that we want to look for from a basic point of view. And once we've created our watch list, where we've got a, a trending watch list, which is basically for a pullback, and a breakout watch list, which is potentially for emerging trends. Then we can keep an eye on those two watch lists throughout the rest of the week. By the way, guys, uh, at the bottom right, the number is 36 at the moment. If you're liking what we go through and what we've been through the last couple of days, and if you like what we go through today, please uh, do share this stream with, with your followers, either on Twitter or Periscope or both. Uh, and please, if you do uh, like the stream, uh, happily uh, accept the hearts that you're tapping away. There's quite a few at the moment, so thank you very much for that. Okay, so we've created the watch lists for pullbacks and breakouts uh, at the weekend. And that's pretty much our job done. We don't have anything else to do at the weekend. Of course, the markets are closed, including foreign exchange, which is open 24 hours a day, except the weekend. So that's all our work done, and that actually is the hardest part. Scanning in med stock, or whatever software you may use, you may want to do something similar, scanning 10,000 stocks into a more suitable level that you can go through. And once you've scanned them, you actually want to go through them manually. Now, again, Anne does the stocks, so she actually has to go through the stocks manually. I used to do that, but she's taken over that some years ago. So lucky for me, I don't need to actually spend as much time. But in terms of time, she probably spend about two hours going through all the stocks, finding the criteria that she likes, finding the good trends, and by good trends, I'm referring to neat linear trends, trends that are moving either upwards or downwards, but fairly smoothly, not with a, a jagged effect, a jagged effect rather. So it's fairly smooth, neat, linear, clean. That's what we look for. Um, a, an easy ride is what we want, as opposed to a difficult ride. So once we've got the, the watch list, then we can use that watch list Monday through to Friday. And we actually share our watch list with our community. So everyone has actually the same watch list. And what we do is we'll go through Monday morning, Tuesday morning, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the same process. And this process takes about 20 minutes. It doesn't take very long at all. 
So what we're looking for, and again, I'm going to refer to stocks because that's the, the larger broader picture. Foreign exchange is fairly easy and just takes minutes, if, if that. Uh, stocks take a little bit longer, but overall, foreign exchange and stocks, Monday through to Friday, each day will take less than 20 minutes for us. So the first thing we look for is the actual stocks on our list, and we look for the ones that are on the breakout. Stocks that are breaking out are ones that we're actually interested in potentially trading. Thank you very much, Sanjay. I appreciate that. Um, uh, N-U-S-R-E, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I, I'm afraid I can't understand what your message is. I'm sorry. Um, so stocks that are breaking out, um, they're the initial potential emergence of a trend. If we can have a trend that's potentially emerging, then we can look for initial breakout and possibly we can use an additional filter. So we can use a time element because we don't want to have a fake breakout. Once we've had a breakout, we can wait maybe five days or however many days that you may wish to wait, three days, five days, or, or even 10 days if you want to, but have a, a certain time element if you wish, so that if it has broken out and it dips back into that range, we've bypassed that trade. So if it has broken out, we wait a few more days, and then if it continues to break out, or in other words, it continues to move in the direction we want it to move in, we'll then enter into that trade. Or alternatively, you can wait for a breakout, a retest of that breakout point. So if you're looking for a resistance area and it's breaking out of that, then a retest that resistance, which now becomes support, a bounce from those areas, uh, potentially another point of reference where you can look to enter those trades. Excuse me. So once you have a, a breakout, then you've got an opportunity to enter a trade once you've filtered it. In a pullback formation, what you're looking for is a neat trend and you're looking for a clean pullback. And I, I stress that we want a clean pullback. We don't want a messy pullback. A messy pullback could actually just be the beginnings of a consolidation. Of course, we might know that until some time later, but the point I'm making is that we don't want a messy consolidation. We don't want a messy pullback. We want a clean pullback for a good continuation. The neater the pullback, hopefully, the, the better the continuation will be from that point onwards. So we look for breakouts and pullbacks from those watch lists that we created at the weekend. So we go through every single stock, and we look to see what has happened today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. On our watch list, we use a software called eSignal, and we've created a few variety of ways to actually identify a lot of that information without actually having to check the stocks. Uh, do you check volume at breakout? Yes, we do check volume at breakout. Uh, and we look for increased volume. Um, ideally, it's not, it's not necessarily that if it hasn't got increased volume, we won't take it, but ideally, we want to have increased volume. So once we have the, the criteria set up, and once we've been through uh, the stocks, then we have an idea of which ones we want to look to trade. Now we're based in the UK, majority of the dynamic traders. So this information we, we go through about nine o'clock our time, and about 2.30 the US market actually opens. This is from uh, a UK perspective or, or a European perspective. So we have about five hours before we can actually go through this information and identify what we like, what we don't like. And it's also discussed in our community. So for those traders in our community that are based in America, um, pretty much when they wake up, the, the US market is actually starting. So they can look onto our TRC, which is the Trading Room Community, find the stocks that are potentially um, opportunis opportuni opportunistic for that day, if that's the right word to use, uh, and then look at those stocks themselves and see if they'd want to trade that. Alternatively, they can go through the whole process themselves if they have the time, which again, it's only 20 minutes is not a lot of time, but it depends on how busy you are in the mornings. Now, once you've gone through the stocks and once you've found the ones that you like, you want to place orders for them. So what we do is we place limit orders. We don't place a market order. In other words, we place an order to open when price is hit. So if we have an entry point in this area here and the price is here at the moment, we want price to get from here to here before we actually trigger that trade. And that allows us to not have to watch the market when be concerned about it all the time. So we use limit orders to actually enter into our trades. Once we've entered our trades, we then manage them. So part of the process in the mornings of that 20 minutes is managing previous positions. And again, we've spoke about this on a previous Periscope. And by the way, if you are joining for the first time, which I know a few of you are, then on our website, which is this website here that you can see, uh, there is a link to the previous periscopes. You can watch them. They're about 20 minutes each, and they're all recorded. So 
each one from, from this week has been recorded. I do advise you to, to watch them if you're interested to know how we actually trade from a beginner's level. And we're going to go through to uh, intermediate and advanced over the period of weeks and months, by the way. So part of the, the management, uh, trend trading allows me to also work full time, little work, huge gains. Um, Pixie, by the way, the Pixie Trader, the name that you see at the moment, um, I, I'm going to share a story with you guys, and I hope you don't mind Pixie. Um, Pixie went to went to bed one evening, I think it's about 10 o'clock. Uh, just prior to going to bed, she had placed a few orders on the foreign exchange market. Now, she happened to wake up about 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm, I'm probably not going to get these figures exactly right, but I, I'm roughly about in the right place. She wake up at two o'clock in the morning and happened to check her trades, and um, she had I think it was about eighteen thousand uh, pounds. This was on the thirty first of May two thousand eleven, so she had about eighteen thousand uh, pounds. Within I think two or three weeks, uh, she had made her and her partner Sanjay had made about thirty eight thousand uh, pounds from trading a specific type of setup, and I just want to refer to that setup for a second which is basically, we don't use Elliott Waves, Elliott Waves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and Corrections ABC, we're not actually interested in them ourselves personally. But if you look at it from an Elliott Wave perspective, there are two types of trends we actually like. Um, I refer to them as a speeding driver and a sensible driver. Now for those of you who are familiar with Elliott Waves, Elliott Wave 3, which I refer to as a speeding driver, that's the best kind of wave we want to get into because it's pretty much linear, smooth, clean, and very quick. So in other words, you enter a trade, you don't have any real concern about it because it pretty much moves in your direction straight away and very quickly as well. And that's what I refer to as a speeding driver. Elliott Wave 5 does a similar thing, but it takes its time. It's more of a sensible driver, so it kind of moves up a little bit if it's in an uptrend, has a bit of a pullback, moves up, has a pullback, moves up, has a pullback. So it's still doing the same thing, but it's a bit more docile, a bit more lazy. So an Elliott Wave 3 and Elliott Wave 5 ideally are the areas that we want to look for. Now, the reason we don't use Elliott Waves is because they're quite subjective. After the event, they're fantastic. You can identify Elliott Waves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, ABCs, or complex corrections, ABCDE, but during the actual process, they're not as accurate as you would want them to be. Nothing really is that accurate, but this is actually very subjective, and it's a lot of hard work, and certainly will take more than 20 minutes a day. Anyway, Pixie happened to, men, uh, happened to go into these trades on an Elliott Wave 3 speeding driver. So within a few hours of being in the trade, she had made approximately £10,000. I'm, again, not exactly sure the exact figures because it's happened in 2011. Um, but I know within three or four weeks, um, Sanjay and Pixie had made £38,000. And the reason for that is because they were in a phase of the market where it was a speeding driver. And that brings me on to my next point, which is one of the things that, and this is probably the harder part of the analysis, and one of the things that Anne does is she goes through the market and identifies what kind of phase we are actually in, and should we be standing aside or should we be trading? And if we are trading, should we take a full allocation of risk or partial allocation of risk? I'm not going to go into risk at this moment in time. I will do a future periscope, because that's a periscope in its own it, it will take quite a long time to, to go through. But that is quite important because risk management will actually give you the ability to refrain from taking too much risk when the market conditions aren't exactly right, which is this moment in time, by the way. Or it will allow you to take full allocated risk when the market conditions are favorable. And that's what we want to look for. We want to look for good market conditions. So over the last few months, those of you who trade stocks and also for foreign exchange, actually, the markets have been very quiet. They've been in consolidation, perhaps because of Greece or China or whatever else. They've been in consolidation. Um, all of Anne uh, takes on the market is published within a members area for members to interact on. That is correct. Sanjay uh, mentioned that Anne, when she does her analysis at the weekend, she gives that information out to the members uh, in the members area. So it, it allows us all to actually benefit from what the market conditions are, what are the good stocks to look at, uh, what are the stocks that we want to perhaps wait for? And one of the things that we look for in addition to the actual breakout support and resistance are 52-week highs and 52-week lows. 
Uh, you'll be surprised, they are actually very beneficial and many dynamic traders have done very well from just trading 52 week highs or 52 week lows. So a break of a 52 week high gives you a potential for a continuation, a break of a 52 week low gives you a potential for a shorting continuation. And you may think, well, what's the significance of a 52 week high or 52 week low? If you look at a 10 day high, for instance, that is a, a resistance from within the last 10 days. It's got some kind of resistance, but it's nothing major. If you look at a resistance that was made within the last 52 weeks, that is going to be a much stronger resistance. If you break through that, of course, there is a chance of a fake breakout. But that aside, if you break through a 52-week high with increased volume and a continuation pattern or whatever else you may want to use, you will have a good probability of a continuation in that direction. So these are all the things that we look for and then and shares with the, the community. But this isn't about the way we particularly trade. This is the way that I think over the years have been fairly beneficial for, for not just me, but for everyone else as well. I used to day trade, I used to scout, and I used to be in front of the computer all the time. But now, with the analysis done at the weekend, each day takes 20 minutes a day. So, once we've got our watch list, we go through that every single day. And it takes 20 minutes, we're looking for breakouts and we're looking for pullbacks. We're looking for continuation patterns, basically. If we've got that, then we can place a limit order, which is when price reaches that point, it triggers. That allows us to not have to watch the market all the time, not have to be glued to the screen. That allows us to actually go out or enjoy the day, whatever we want to do, without having to be watching the computer and the market. And that is one of the benefits of actually trading longer term or trend trading. The additional feature of trend trading, which many traders will not be familiar with because if you take a target, you won't have to use this particular step. The additional feature is that you manage your trades. So if you've got trades that are running, for instance, I've got Euro dollar that is running. Um, I think it's maybe about two months now, possibly. Uh, and it's in profit, but the market is in consolidation, so it's actually not doing very much. I uh, also got New Zealand dollar, US dollar, which is a short. Um, that is in profit. That's pulling back at the moment, but still in profit. And uh, New Zealand dollar, Canadian dollar, and the US dollar, Japanese yen. Now, these are all foreign exchanges that I have. Uh, and they're all in profit, but they're not in huge profits because the market is consolidating. Now, if the market was trending, I would probably have to make some kind of amendments to that, maybe each morning or every so often. Sanjay has got um, Aussie Pound uh, as a, a foreign exchange trade. So if these markets were trending and if these profits were accelerating, I would need to move my stop loss on a day-to-day -day basis to lock in more profit. That is part of the 20 minute routine that I have on a daily basis. Now, as it stands at the moment and over the last month, the markets have been very, very quiet. The stock market generally is quiet seasonally at this time of year. And the reason for that is because the big dogs, the, the, the large investment firms, most of the traders are away from their desks and on holiday. So the summer holiday period, basically from May onwards up until September, for the stock market is fairly dosed off, fairly quiet and not much happens. Low liquidity, low volume, and the markets tend to go into a pullback or into a consolidation. And if you look at the stock market, I'm talking about the US market specifically, you'll see that we are actually in some kind of correction. That is due to low volume. There will be other reasons, I'm sure, but at least low volume will be part of that reason. September onwards, we tend to have some kind of move with more volume. And of course, we often tend to have a Santa Claus rally. It's not a given we'll have it every year, but we often tend to have a Santa Claus rally uh, towards Christmas time. With the foreign exchange market, I think it was September last year when the moves started to happen up until about March this year. So we were in the euro dollar trade and I'm referring to the community. Um, but as a day trader, you got higher profit or question mark. But as a day trader, you've got higher profit. That's not true, not necessarily. If you trading on a smaller time frame on a day trader, you don't necessarily make more money. You just trade more often. With one thing that day traders have um, the ability of not to do so in other words, this is not a feature for day traders because there's no time element, is compounding. With compounding, and longer term traders can compound, with compounding, you can actually make a lot more money for doing very little. Day trading and scalping doesn't allow for compounding in the same way because with compounding, you need to have time and scalping and day trading don't allow that time element. Whereas if you're trading for months, 
So for instance, the, the euro dollar short that we took in the Diamond Trader community back in September, um, September through to I think it was March, and we ignore the news completely, so we're not interested in non-farm payrolls or anything else. But during that period, every time it gave us a particular setup, we compounded. So what would be just in, in from a day trading perspective, a one position or two positions, we ended up having eight or ten positions. Um, the euro dollar compounding gave me 15,000 pips. That is Cola. Cola is one of the members from the community, over 15,000 pips. Uh, and that is through compounding. Um, and uh, Cola isn't alone on that. There are others who have also profited from the euro dollar uh, trend and compounds over those, uh, over those months. So day trading is perhaps um, a, a fun way of trading. I mean, I, I found it fun, although stressful, it was active. Um, but it's a different way of trading. Trend trading is a more relaxed, take a step back and watch the bigger picture kind of way of trading. Uh, and it does allow you to enjoy your days. It, I mean, it really does. As I said to you yesterday, in the last three months, I think we spent probably a week at home. We've been away almost every single day. Um, with day trading, that is not a possibility for us. Uh, Sanji took the heating oil trade for four months of huge profits. And I, I, I remember that trade, in fact, that you took, uh, Sanji, you mentioned it in the, the community. And it did go on to make a very good profits. So... Once we've managed the trades in the mornings, uh, once we've looked at new setups, once we've placed any orders and um, placed the, the limit orders on the, uh, the platform, that is our day done. We're not interested in what happens for the rest of the day. We have everything that we need to do to actually then go out and enjoy our day. Um, what is your strategies? Uh, that's kind of a hard question to, to answer. What is your strategy? So uh, we trade breakouts and pullbacks. So um, we generally tend to look for trending markets, uh, and I suppose the strategy is we, we don't trade consolidations. The, the biggest fear that people have is, uh, as I mentioned yesterday, the fear of missing out, FOMO. And often we will not trade consolidations because the market's going sideways, but many people will trade consolidations because they have the FOMO syndrome, the fear of missing out. They'll trade a consolidation hoping that the trend will then emerge from that. But that isn't always the case. Gold has been going up, and we've been trading gold for many years. I started in 2001, I started trend trading in 2003, we took quite a few gold positions out from 2003 or four onwards, up until about 2010, when the market finally started to change direction. It's been consolidation for the past few years. That is not a surprise, because after a big move, you're going to have a period of consolidation. Like I mentioned previous scope, you've got a man running up a hill or a person running up a hill. If it's a very big hill, at some point they need to take a rest. So they'll stop, have a breather, and before they do a continuation, before they continue that run up that hill to get to the top. Gold, it made a big move over many, many years. Now, over the last three, four years, it's been consolidating. It's been going sideways. Key and cool down. Correct. So once it's gone into consolidation, it's kind of going sideways, then it will make a new move. Whether it's to the upside or downside, we don't know, but we're waiting for a new move to occur. Once that new move occurs, we'll then enter that trade. So to, to answer the previous question, um, which what kind of strategies do we trade? We trade breakouts and we trade pullbacks, but we probably trade breakouts more because the markets consolidate more than they actually trend. Uh, even if it's a mini consolidation. For instance, gold's broken down of its support level recently, then it went into this mini consolidation and then did a little pullback and it's retesting what's previously support now becomes resistance. I don't actually know what it's done today, I haven't looked at it. But this is a very routine feature of the markets. It, it will happen again and again and again. It's not a new thing, it's not a new occurrence, it's the same thing, again, repeated. So. The strategy we use are breakouts. The strategy we don't use, if you like, are training, training within consolidations. So what we're looking for is a breakout or a pullback in a trending market that is that also has an overall trending market. When I'm referring to the indices, the, uh, the ma major indices, if you like. If we have everything in our favor, so in other words, the whole market is trending and we have breakouts and trends within the stocks that we're looking at, then we can look to place those trades 
And we can do that Monday through to Friday in the mornings with a limit order and rest of the day we have free. So a couple of things that we look for, for stocks this is, not so much for foreign exchange because currencies are pretty liquid. Uh, for stocks, we're looking for a trending market. We're looking for the weekly and daily to be in the same direction, and we spoke about this yesterday. Uh, yeah, as Andrew just says, probability stacked on our side. That's what we're looking for. We're trying to increase the probability, and one way of doing that is to have the weekly and daily in the same direction. We spoke about bias. We want the bias in the same direction on the weekly and daily. We want to have a neat trend, and for stocks, we want them to be generally over $20. Now, that amount can vary. I mean, if you have a smaller account size, you may want to use $10. But I wouldn't necessarily figure that if you go less than $10, you've got a better chance of trading because stocks that are less than $10 don't have a lot of volume to them. If they don't have a lot of volume to them, they won't have a lot of momentum to them. If they haven't got a lot of momentum, they won't have a trend. So it's pretty much a false economy. We, we tend to look for stocks generally over $20. We will make the exception for stocks that are between $10 and $20 if they're good, but not less than $10. If we can find stocks that are trending and are above $20, and they've already been trending for a while, they're the stocks that we go onto our watch list if they've got neat trends. Uh, rise or freeze, what leverage the starting amount would you recommend in Forex or even a specific Forex broker? Um, that's it varies person to person. The the training that when I when I used to do training for people, one of the first things they used to ask them was about the the amount that they have to trade with. Um, is it going to make a, a life changing difference to them if they use that amount of money and if they lost it? So it it will vary, but as a as a rough guidance, when someone first starts out trading, we recommend they don't trade with more than a thousand pounds. Uh, the equivalent would be dollars or, or euros, depending on where you're based. Uh, and that is because the first few months is just going to be trial and error. And when you're trying something new, um, I'm not referring to trading, but I'm referring to a trade. When you're trying something new, you want to trade the smallest amount of money possible. So you take out what's called a pilot position. You test the water. If, if it works, then you can add to that position. And that's what we refer to as compounding. So you don't need a lot of money to start off with. What you need is experience and knowledge. So during that period, you start off with a small amount of capital in your trading account. As you gain your knowledge and your experience, you increase that capital to a point where you're confident and comfortable with the amount that you have in there. But you do it gradually over time. Uh, in terms of a broker, I'm not affiliated with any broker at all, but brokers that we have used and, and do use are FXCM. Uh, Jeff, good to have you on board. Thank you to, for, for joining me. First time seeing me on here. Yes. I'm glad you've joined, finally. Thank you very much. Uh, brokers that we, we tend to use and have used are FXCM. Um, in the UK, it's IG Index, which is for, for spread betting. And, and there are various different stock brokers as well, so there are quite a few good ones uh, in, in terms of stocks. But whatever you decide in terms of um, how much you want to, to use, do use a small amount. Don't start off with a large amount. Uh, someone I know who traded uh, or initially started trading going back in 2009 I think it was um, they're very very wealthy and they initially started with um, I think it was five thousand pounds and they got very bored very quickly and put in approximately two hundred fifty thousand um, pounds Jeff I, I missed that last question I'm sorry um, if you could perhaps ask that again please sorry um, so they, they put in a large amount very quickly because they got very bored with the amount that they traded with initially. And the downside of that is, although it's a large amount and they can afford to trade with that amount of money, the percentage still stays the same, but the monetary value actually changes quite a lot. Um, Pixie uh, invited our followers, Jeff. Great, thank you very much. Uh, did you lose during 2008? No, not at all. We actually did very well. Will you be streaming for at least five more minutes? Yes, I certainly will be, Jeff, without any doubt. Um, in 2008, actually, I was in New York. Myself and Anne were both in New York in 2007, in fact. And uh, we went to Boston. Then we went to Mount Washington. We drove to Mount Washington. We drove to Niagara Falls. We went to Atlantic City. Then we drove to, um, to New York and then back to Boston again. And we did that over a good few weeks. And... Um, that holiday actually did very well for us because while we were having positions open, we actually had good positions open that worked in our favour. By the time we were actually in New York, we were staying at the Hyatt in New York. 
Um, <laughs> thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. I appreciate that. So by the time we got to, to New York, we were staying at the Hyatt in New York. By the time we got there, the market actually just started to turn around. And I happened to send an email. In those days, we didn't have a, a the TRC community. Um, what we had was uh, an email list. We'd speak to everyone in regards to, uh, to trading on an email. Um, Kim Ragai, I will come back to you in regards to the strategy question in a moment. Um, so by the time we got to New York, this was 2007-8, um, I sent out an email saying that crude oil looks like it may start to move downwards, uh, the next support level is 100, then 80. Uh, in fact, crude oil went all the way down from 140, went below 80, 60, up to, I think it was about $45 it went down to. So it went down a huge amount, and it was very profitable, much more than we thought it would be in our community. Uh, the same with stocks. They went down a huge amount very quickly. And with the stock market, the market tends to go up fairly consistently, gradually and slowly. But it drops like a stone. It drops very, very quickly. So stocks will move down very quickly, but they'll move up very gradually. With the foreign exchange market, because you're trading one component against another, you've got equal pegging. You can go up or down at, a, at, either, at either speed. But stock market, especially the US market I'm referring to because we trade mainly the US market, the stock market will move very quickly in a downward direction. In an upward direction, it'll move very consistently. Um, Jeff, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. Uh, greeting from Paraguay. Thank you for, for joining. Okay, so um, just to recap, our day basically starts at the weekend on a Saturday. Anne and I go through foreign exchange and stocks. We then compile our watch list. We're looking for breakouts. We, we don't trade penny stocks, no. Uh, we're looking for breakouts. We're looking for um, pullbacks. We compile two watch lists, and those watch lists will last Monday to Friday for the coming week. Monday through to Friday, each morning, we spend about 20 minutes finding out candidates that have actually broken out and that are trending quite well. And we may wish to use a time element before we enter those trades. And uh, if we're looking for a pullback, we're looking for a neat move and a clean pullback before a continuation. So those are the two styles of trades that we're looking at, and I'm answering also the question uh, in regards to our strategy, looking for breakouts and pullbacks. Uh, in regards to management, we tend to manage with a fairly wide stop. We also use foreign exchange, yes, we do, uh, BK5950. We tend to use basically uh, a wider stop, so we allow good trends to continue. So with the US market, which is what we trade, the US market trends very well. It's the most liquid market uh, in terms of stocks in the world. It is the biggest stock market in the world. So if the US market, if, if the US sneezes, the rest of the world catches the cold. So basically, you want to focus on the US market. No matter what stock market you trade, you want to focus on the US market primarily and then look at other markets. Of course, you've got emerging markets will buck the trend slightly, but for the main part, the US market is the main market in the world. So we follow the US market, we trade the US market, and we spend 20 minutes a day pretty much trading the US market, foreign exchange market, and managing our current positions. So to answer the question, our strategies, we're looking for breakouts of resistance or support levels, and we're looking for pullbacks. We look for the bias to be same on a weekly and a daily time frame. So weekly time frame, if the price is above the 200 moving average and the same on the daily, then we have a bullish bias. If the price is below the 200 moving average on the weekly and same on the daily, we have a bearish bias. Bullish bias means we can look to take long positions. Bearish bias means we look to take short positions. If there is any difference between the two, we may want to stand aside or reduce our risk. Uh, use candlestick charts. Yeah, we do use candlestick charts. For foreign exchange, primarily we use foreign um, candlestick charts. Uh, also for stocks as well, but it is more important for currency because it's the liquidity levels. And looking at a day-to-day -day basis of what's happening on the market on currency it gives you a bit more information with candlesticks. But certainly from our community point of view, Diamond Credit community, we use candlesticks across the board. Um, okay, so I think that's all the points that I wanted to cover. Is there any questions that I haven't answered because I may have missed them as we were going along? And if so, please ask them again and I'll, and I'll answer them for you. Uh, in the meantime, if you have not watched the previous scopes, they are on the website. I have recorded them, so please do catch up with them. It, you know, they're permanently so at your own leisure whenever it's convenient for you. Uh, Jeff, I want to thank you for inviting your followers. You've increased the 
of the Count 275. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And welcome on board. It's the first time I've had you on here. Jeff, by the way, if, if you guys um, hadn't seen Jeff, Jeff Goldberg, can you please put some emojis up on here? Uh, please follow Jeff. He is a fantastic guy. He's probably one of the first people I followed originally on Meerkat. And, and I know Jeff's moved over to Periscope and still uses Meerkat. Um, but Jeff travels, does Sights and Sounds of New York. In fact, it's because of Jeff that myself and Anne started doing Sights and Sounds of London and, and the countryside. Uh, and he does fantastic Sights and Sounds of New York. So if you guys um, hadn't seen Jeff's details, please look back on the recording and make sure you follow him. He does some really, really interesting stuff there. Um, I don't think Jeff's still on. I think he might have gone, so it's a bit unfortunate. But, um, okay, guys, thank you so much for, for your time today. I appreciate it. There will be a, a scope again tomorrow. During the course of this week, the scopes will be in the evenings, um, UK time, which is uh, 7 o'clock-ish. Um, next week, we're going to change the time and make it slightly earlier. And, um, and we'll do so every week, and we'll change the times going forward from there. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for for um, your time today. Really, uh, really appreciate it. Um, Pat, thank you. Miguel, thank you. Khan, uh, Rise of Free, thank you. Anything else on compound forex trading? We will be doing a scope on compounding that will be going forward uh, in, in the coming weeks, but not today, unfortunately. Um, Sean, thank you very much. And, and uh, I hope you received my, my reply to your question yesterday. Uh, Safra, will this be on YouTube? Yes, it will be. Uh, Peter, so thank you very much, Patrick. Appreciate it. Guys, I hope you all have a, a very good day, afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are. Thank you so much for your time. Please do join me again tomorrow uh, when we talk about, um, in fact, I'm not sure what we're going to talk about tomorrow. I've got it written down, but I can't remember the top of my head. But uh, it will be around the same time tomorrow, so please do join. Okay, guys, thank you. Have a good, uh, good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.